Today, I'm gonna go into excruciating detail as I compare and contrast and share my experiences with these oversized grips. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. If you like to golf, you probably care about the golf grips you're using. Now, I am going to just warn you. If you are not into grips, if you are not looking at these grips, the oversized grips, you are interested in grip theory and excruciating detail, including the measurements of this grip, you can just tune out now. I'm going to save you this time because this video is probably going to drone on about each of these grips. Now, the set of grips here that I have actually represents my grip journey journey basically from start to finish here and I'm going to explain how I kind of started with this grip and ended up with this group grip and all of my experiences with the grips in between because you might find and discover the perfect grip for you and that's all I really want to do here so everything is just my opinion and I just want to explain what I experience with every grip but also give you all of the dimensions for the grips because I think that's actually kind of hard to find for some of these now first of all this is the jumbo max ultra light grip here this is the extra small so it's the smallest one they make in this oversized EVA foam it's actually really light I think it's only 60 grams so it's pretty light it's really no heavier than most of your standard rubber golf pride grips i think a mcc plus four grip is 59 grams something like this so this is just marginally heavier but it's obviously much larger now one of the things that i realized on this and i will also say as i'm giving you dimensions usually when you mount these grips onto shafts they kind of bulge just a little bit they're meant to be tight so that they don't slide off so they do just add uh, just a hair more thickness as you put them on so take that into account but my issue with this is i put it on my driver primarily because i really wanted to see if i could get more surface area get a better grasp on the club that would allow me to have maybe more control maybe not roll my hands as much I would tend to slice or draw a little bit just because I couldn't get the timing down so you with less uh, wrist movement you can actually square up a little easier sometimes so I wanted to see if I could do that obviously Jumbo Max is a name you know because Bryson DeChambeau is just smashing the heck out of these things now my experience was with this was that um, I have medium hands I wear a cadet medium glove so kind of take that into account uh pretty average size hands but to me the grip was just a little too big i mean just the smallest amount too big i could play with it and i played rounds of golf with it but i never quite felt like i had a full grip on it i never really felt like i was grasping it like this right so when you get into your grip stance i felt like this little gap here which doesn't look like a lot and i could almost get my fingers to touch there but i'd really have to kind of bear down on this to get it uh feeling secure in my hand was that it's just a little too big. So even though, where does it say it? This is the extra small, it's the smallest they make. I wish they made an XX small because the size of this grip is actually just a little bit bigger than pretty much everyone else's oversized grips so kind of the maximum size that other club makers are making right now or grip makers are making this is just a hair bigger and then they go bigger now that's probably fine for a company that names themselves jumbo max they don't want to make a lot of small grips but if they made one that was really truly exactly the same size as everyone else's oversized grips i would really like that and i'd probably even be playing this because i liked it that much now this was really my first foray into oversized grips and it's uh it's a really good grip it held up well now i want to show you here i'm not going to go quite to the butt end because i don't think most people hold it at this end and most people don't hold the little ferrule down there so i'm going to be just about a quarter inch uh below the butt end and away from the tip when i give you these measurements but you can see here my calipers say this is 1.19 inches and then down here on the skinny end if i do it this way just to show you here then we are down to 0.89 inches so it's a pretty big grip overall now um, I'm gonna put this over here because it ends up coming back into play before I get to this last grip but this is the grip that I tried out next and this is the dry tack light there is a dry tack regular but it's actually kind of heavy now the dry tack lights are an EVA foam like this they actually feel very similar you know there's a foam and then I think this little like uh, rubber silicone 
some type of covering on it. You can see there's a little seam right there. And again, this is really light. And in fact, the oversized grip here is actually lighter than the original velvet grips that I started with. So even though it's bigger and it's oversized, and this is the largest size that dry tack makes in the light, that um, it's actually lighter than my, my grip. So one of the really awesome things about this is that it doesn't really screw up your swing weight when you put these on. So you might think, hey, Pete, if I want to go to a larger grip, get more control, maybe be easier on my hands, maybe something that's thicker is going to take out that vibration, the sting out of shots, you'd be right on all accounts, but I'm going to add a lot of weight and then it's going to screw up with my head weights. So this grip is really perfect for that. It gets you to the oversized. I actually went to the midsize first and actually I didn't really feel a lot of difference between the midsize and a standard grip but you can definitely feel it here and this is my medium hands my finger can absolutely touch my palm even when I'm in a golf grip right there just like that which is great but I feel like I have a good grasp of this all the way down this material right here is very very grippy they have some nice alignment aids on it uh, I would say that the issue with this is that it's not very durable. I don't know how durable the Jumbo Max is. I didn't play with it a whole season, but I did play with this a whole season and the grips looked pretty good. I would say that the most important uh, where that I saw was right where my thumb was on my driver. So I kind of tend to press right here with my thumb and I get a little wear spot. Didn't hamper the grip performance at all, but I did regrip at the end of the season anyway, but I probably didn't need to. And probably a little cleaning would have taken care of that. But your driver is just one of those clubs that you're gripping with some authority and you are playing it 17 16 times around and you are pr pretty much playing it all the time at the driving range so it's not surprising that i saw the wear there but on the rest of my irons i had no problems with it i've heard people say that these get slick in moisture i've been playing in some high humidity a little light rain and drizzle sometimes i never had a problem with that so i really loved it this is actually one of my favorite grips of all time it's the smaller size from the Jumbo Max that I was just asking for. And it's basically the same construction and it is absolutely awesome. So I really, really like this. They are not super cheap, but they are a wonderful, wonderful grip. And like I said, this was my choice all last year. Now, because I love these dry tacks so much, I actually wanted to try this. This is a dry tack LT, which means it's less taper. And one of the reasons that I was doing that is I noticed that, you know, all golf grips have some taper, but when you open up the palm here, it just felt so nice. But then when I put my other hand up here, you start getting to the thin part again. So it starts getting, you know, it's going to be larger than a standard grip, but it starts feeling like less material and I've got my biggest fingers down here and my smallest fingers down here and even though I've got my biggest fingers up here I just don't have as much material I actually felt like it would be nice to have a little thicker material so I thought man if they made this grip in a no taper so it's just taperless all the way down that'd be great and I found this dry tack less taper and I thought man this might be the perfect grip now I will say even though the construction seems pretty similar on this and I think it is an EVA foam it's actually slightly heavier than this one um, I don't know, like 10, 15, 20 grams heavier. So it's it's significantly heavier. It's not a heavy grip by any means. I'm not saying that. And if you pick this up, you'd probably think it was just the same weight as any other grip, primarily because it's so much larger. So you're kind of expecting in your mind it for it to be a little heavier, but it's not. So it feels really good in the hand. It's just slightly heavier. But one of the issues here to me was that even though this is the oversized, right? Does it say that right there? Oversized in the less taper grip it actually doesn't have that much less taper so what i want to show you here is that we have kind of the same butt caps on the end but down here at the the end here even though it says less taper this might be slightly wider than this and you can see it's maybe a little flatter here but to me it just kind of narrows a little bit quicker where this narrows very straight if if you were to draw a line put a dot here and a dot here and draw a straight line i feel like this is a very straight taper even though it's tapering this says it has less taper but it just gets aggressively more tapered here and then flattens out so basically what i want to show you here is some dimensions between these two dry tacks so if i take the dry tack uh top end here and this is the light and basically it says it's 1.07 and at the bottom here it says it's well, it's, I don't want to squeeze it. 0.82. So let's check out this less taper. So if I go up here, okay, 1.09. So basically the same thing. But if I just go down here to the maybe three inches down, now we're at 0.91. And then if I go down here almost all the way to the bottom, we're at 
485. So that's what I'm talking about is that to me, while it seemed like it was going to be an improvement, there really was not any noticeable difference to me. And because I actually think that the standard oversized grip is a little thicker up here for a little longer, I actually felt like this was a little bit better because by the time I got my second hand down here, it felt almost exactly the same as my second hand down here. And I didn't think the weight trade off. Uh, was worth it so these were pretty much the same thing now i would have loved to see this in a light version and i would have loved to see it uh be less taper be that 1.09 up here and maybe like 1.05 or 1.03 down here so really really light taper on it okay so i wanted to search around and figure out hey are there some grips that I might like with less taper on them? And I came across this. It's by Super Stroke. This is a brand that you are probably familiar with, but mostly in their putter grips. So as far as I've ever seen, I've never seen anyone with swinging grips from Super Stroke, but I've seen a lot of Super Stroke putter grips, and it doesn't surprise me that they make swinging grips. I'm surprised that they don't have more traction in there, but they have some beautiful swinging grips here. And this one is the Traxian. And again, I was looking at this and I thought, man, this one is going to be perfect because this one is also oversized. It says right there on the butt. And if it's oversized and it also, it also advertised less taper, right? So uh, that was pretty cool. It has like this EVA foam material, which I would um, expect to be similar to what's in their putter grip and they also have this pretty distinct seam where the material on the top the covering material gets sewn together and they said that it's a raised seam so that you can feel it and it works as an alignment aid so I thought that'd be pretty cool but I will say you know when I got this I was a little bit disappointed first of all on the size itself even though this is their oversized grip and i'm not sure if it's because of the the quick taper up at the top or whatnot but if you were to put this in my hand i would I would say this is no bigger than a mid-sized. I mean, I would I would actually claim that this is a mid-sized grip because especially when I compare it to an oversized grip here, an oversized grip here, a jumbo grip right here, this feels much, much smaller. Look at this. I can put both fingers into my palm basically here and it doesn't feel bad but it's got just a little bit more of that pistol grip like a putter grip than i like it probably straightens out once you mount it here but it just doesn't feel that large and i really wanted something large especially once you've gone to something large you just never go back because it's so comfortable you get so much purchase area on there so much control and it's easier on your hands that going smaller feels a little bit like you're holding a chopstick and you don't and i mean things feel a little out of control to be really honest so this should be advertised as a mid-size grip to me also because they say less taper i was disappointed because i didn't really see that to me it tapers as quickly as any other grip i mean look at this look at this narrow end down here i mean to me it it tapers very quickly and then is pretty thin all along there so when i was putting this on and playing with it it's not a bad grip by any means it's nice um weight too it's it's a little lighter it's about the size of a standard grip or the same weight as a standard grip but it's only about a mid-sized size and it didn't have the oversized of the taper that i wanted so let's go ahead and take a look at the butt end here and this says 4.06 so again that's not that big it's smaller than the dry tax and if i go down here to the to the skinny end 0.79 so it's thinner than both both of those both of which advertise themselves to be oversized there all right so i did not actually golf with this i put them on the clubs i hit some uh balls at the driving range at the simulator and i just wasn't sold it this just was a backward step from these not a bad grip at all but from where i was on these i i took a backward step which brought me back to jumbo max because jumbo max has this grip and it's called the straight s t r eight so it's kind of like how you would spell straight on a vanity license plate and this is their straight tech and i was really hopeful that it might be something like this but i was also worried that it was going to be too big now they make this in a mid and a large size and they don't make a small i wish they made an extra small in there i'll talk to you about why and that's just to fit my hand better but i was a little worried it might be too big now i got this because you know what harm is there when you're trying to experiment and if you're on the hunt for the right grip and you have the chance to find it why not so what i love about this first of all is that it really looks straight i wouldn't be surprised if the butt end and the 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 squeezed end here are exactly the same width because this is this is truly straight now it is a little bit heavy i think there are some reasons for that one when you get into a bigger grip you don't want it to squish around you don't want to just wrap foam around a golf club and have it move around so you do have this problem of making it 
structurally sound and absorbing a vibration without twisting too much and losing control. So I get that all grip companies are struggling a little bit with that. But I also think there's another piece here that it just seems very heavy. It's, it's much, much heavier than this uh, Jumbo Max grip here. And I want to say that I, I think this was 100 grams. So it's twice as heavy as a standard grip. So it's very heavy. Uh, you'll notice it, at, you know, and I'm noticing it picking up these other grips here. But one of the things that they have here is this little receiver on the butt end. And I think that is for like an Arco sensor. So you can put that in and it'll be flush. This does a couple things to me. One, it adds a little weight here unnecessarily because this is a fairly hard and heavy piece of rubber. If you this were chopped off, I think you would lose I don't know, I'm guessing like four or five grams, to be really honest, maybe 10 grams. I'm not sure how heavy that is, but it's kind of nice. If you use those Arco sensors, it'll go right in there. I've never really seen them be an issue when you put them in a stock grip and they're just sticking out, but I think that's what they're meant for. But this means it's a little bit longer than other grips as well. Now, how is the size on this? Well, I was a little worried that I wasn't going to feel the control on this one because of how I, felt like I was just on the ragged edge of having control of this one. I would say this one's better. It seems to be a little skinnier than this up here, but it seems to be fat down here. And that seemed to be really awesome, you know, combination. And I would say that in my hands here, it feels pretty good. Now, one of the things that I said is that, you know, once you mount this and it gets just a smidge bigger, well, maybe one thirty seconds of an inch, maybe it's not even that, it gets just a little bit bigger, it's just outside the range of me feeling really good with this. It just feels a little more uncomfortable than it feels perfect, right? So if it were just a little bit smaller, as I, as I mentioned, if they made an extra small in this or a small instead of just starting at the medium, man, dude, I think I'd be sold on this. There's, there's really... I don't know, a lot to really like about this golf grip. Now, the other thing you might have to worry about is because they have built in this area where the sensor can go, I'm kind of thinking that you might want to choke up on this over a standard grip because most of the grips will end here. So if you're kind of a person that lines up the grip with the end of your hand, uh, you'll probably want it right there to keep your club length about the same. So this is so close to being a really nice grip, you know, but it's a probably a little heavier than I like and a little bit wider in diameter. Now, let me just give you some measurements here. If I open this up, diameter right up here is 1.1 inches. And I just want to compare that to the Jumbo Max Ultralight up here. This see, this one is 1.16. Again, not a big deal, but just a smidge outside of my range of comfort. And if I revisit the end here, 0.89. And we look at the end here, 1.03. So yes, a little bit of a taper, but not much, right? Not much at all. And I really like that. Straight taper sold me, which led me to this because I was obviously looking for a straight taper because I liked having more meat down here for my other hand. And I wanted something just a smidge smaller. So I found this by Tacky Mac. Now, Tacky Mac is a brand that I have not seen in a long time. It's actually a brand that I used on my golf clubs when I was in high school because they were known to be good golf clubs. But there are a couple things that I didn't really like about the Tacky Mac. First of all, the look of it. This is like a wrapped, I think it's a faux wrapped look, but Tacky Mac did start by wrapping golf clubs and it's just such an old school, old fogey look. I mean, I feel like this should be on the end of a hickory stick with a persimmon wood on the the bottom end of it it's just so old school but i guess you should just care about does it work right you can see i don't actually think those are wraps they're just molded in and see even the perforations there are fake they're just little dimples so it looks like perforated strap of leather wrapped around a shaft but it's not it's a it's a real grip i wish they would maybe make them look a little more i don't know sporty modern even the font there is just like a typewriter font like times new roman you know, so everything about this says, you know what, I'm holding on to tradition and I ain't going to let it go. Now, one of the things that I do like about this is that it's a little smaller, right? So when I compare this to the straight tech, you can see that it's quite a bit smaller, fits in my hand a lot better. In fact, it might actually be a little too small for me because they don't offer these in a variety of sizes. This is just the tacky Mac, you know, straight or no taper grip. I think they just call it like the no taper. Um, so unfortunately, they don't have the different size. You can't order in the, the standard or the midsize or the oversize. I wish they did uh, because I, I could just stand this to be just a little bit smaller. Somewhere in between these two, you know, a little bigger than this and a little smaller than this. And I think, man, for my hand, it would be perfect. And that's why I love when 
grip companies offer different sizes so you can find the right one the other thing i really like about this is it's truly a no taper i think that this end is probably the same width as this end right so let me just give you the measurements of this tacky mac here 0.98 inches at the top end and down here 0 0.90 so looks like it does taper just a little bit i don't know if i've got it on the ferrule there uh yep basically 0.9 so there is the slightest slightest of tapers on it but it looks and feels very very straight so that's going to be nice it's going to be a nice consistent feel for me and in this hand right down here this feels really good uh it could even be a little larger you can see i can kind of close my hand around here and if i could just pull these fingers away just a little bit more so that i could even have more surface area to grip so that i don't feel like i have you know a kind of a very small pipe cleaner in my hand that would even be better so I really like this and I hit this a lot and I thought you know what this is kind of the the best of all the worlds it's not perfect in any sense but it's a good size that I can control it's actually quite a bit lighter I think than the straight tech it's not light but it's lighter and uh, it, it has about the same I don't know it feels about the same as like a standard golf grip so I really like that but it's not perfect so I thought geez I really wish I could find the perfect grip all right so as i was thinking about it i would love the material right here for this hand right so if i could take the top end of the dry tack light oversized because that feels perfect in this hand but then have even a bigger area down here so like the top end of the jumbo max ultralight in this sand feels good in, in this hand it's too large it's too large for me but this hand is kind of my pushing guiding rolling hand and i wouldn't mind it being bigger so to be honest the perfect grip to me looks like this now what you'll notice here so if i were to take this as the top end and this is the bottom end what you'll notice here is that this end is actually narrower than this end and i thought well that's interesting i know that some people will and many pros will put tape down and then put half uh, strips of tape down on the bottom end three four extra strips to widen this part so i'm not the only person that likes a wider grip down here so i was thinking all right well i could take my straight grip like this and just load up the tape on the bottom end slide this over and now i'll have you know it feels good in this hand and it'll be even a little larger in this hand and then i was thinking well could i make that and then i realized you know instead of taking this grip which is just a little too big if i reverse it like this and grip it like this and hold the fat end down here this feels pretty good so guess what i did i mounted this on my driver and i played with it i played real golf i went to the simulator went to the driving range i played around golf with it mounted upside down and it felt amazing this is the perfect size for this hand this is the perfect size for this hand and i was like that's great but it's not meant to do that i had an open end on this end it looked a little janky you know my friends kind of poked fun at me and so i beat them up but then i was like well why don't they make that now they do they make a reverse taper grip only two or three companies ever i have found have ever made them and only one in the united states still exists as far as i can tell and that is this company right here and low grips now because i checked out their social media and their website and none of it looked like it had been updated in the last decade i was a little afraid that these grips were going to be vintage they were going to be new old stock that you're going to have to find that they don't manufacture them anymore and i think that they still do now what i want to show you about this grip is it looks like a standard grip right it looks like it tapers and everything else it looks almost exactly like this jumbo grip and when i was trying to figure out the dimensions on it they are pretty similar pretty darn close and that's all well and good because one of the things that i wanted was this jumbo grip just upside down but look at this if you look at the fat end of this end low that's where you mount it the skinny end has a little vent hole right there so it is a reverse taper grip in the truest sense now it's just a little bit shorter than the jumbo max grip here and that's okay but there are some things that i really love and things that i don't first of all because it actually works like the reverse jumbo max grip i really love that in fact the dimensions were just about the same it advertises an inch down here and 1.5 inches down here okay so um what ends up happening is that as you mount this sucker you know again it just kind of gets blown out just a little bit a little firm and it's probably 
perfect in my hands, but I can see that if you don't have my size hands or larger, it's probably gonna be maybe a little too big. And so one of the things that I wish Enlo did was offer this grip in a slightly different sizes, right? So maybe just a slightly smaller one. I think this would be considered oversized, but then say a mid-sized and maybe even a little larger for some of us that actually use these jumbo grips and are comfortable with it that's not me but i know there are some people with bigger hands now the issue with this is that what they do here is they cast it i think so they have like a, a mold because i can see this little seam right down the center and then i think they just inject it with this material now this material i'm not exactly sure what it is some sort of rubber or silicone or or some sort of compound but it's just this material all the way through it's kind of like a regular standard grip it's usually that rubber material that goes all the way through now the pro of that is it seems very stiff so instead of using a really large eva foam where you know the the shaft might twist just a little bit i think this is actually going to be pretty stiff because it's actually pretty pretty solid i mean that's the weird thing about it right it's pretty solid and i don't think you have to worry about it kind of distorting in your hands now the trade-off on that is because it's solid it's pretty heavy this is by far the heaviest golf grip not only that i have ever used but i've ever seen i think this thing is like 130 or 140 grams so when you're going from a 50 gram normal grip to say a 50 or 60 gram oversized grip or if you go to the straight tack which is almost 100 grams or something like that i mean these feel heavy now throw on another grip right so this is basically three times the weight of a normal grip which doesn't surprise me because i'm saying here that we have at least three or four times the material that we do in a standard grip so being three times as heavy probably isn't that big of a deal but it's it's very very heavy now the problem with that is that it's going to affect your swing weight, right? So if you are really fastidious about having the right swing weight, your clubs have to be a certain swing weight, well, it's probably not that hard on a driver to adjust that, but on irons, it can get very, very difficult, especially when you're moving up the swing weight and you have to figure out ways to reduce it. It's not easy to re remove materials. If you wanna increase it, you can put some lead weight on stuff, hot melt your driver or some of those types of things, but to remove weight, especially when you've moved it up, is, is kind of difficult. Now, I will say I haven't changed the weights on my irons or my drivers on this and i think one of the reasons is because the weight is in your hand it's not down there so if you added 100 grams to your head it would feel like a bowling ball on the end of a kite string but when you have that weight up in the in the handle or in the shaft it doesn't translate to as much perceived swing weight changes so um, that's kind of the nice thing now i do wish they made this in an eva foam version right so that you would get a grip that was maybe to be honest, 60, 70, even 80 grams. Uh, even if it were half the weight, I think it would feel a lot more similar to kind of your clubs with a standard grip. So um, I, so that's probably my biggest gripe of this is just the weight. They also have kind of a very simple pattern. You can see this cross hatch pattern on there. I would say that this is very grippy and I'm not sure if these are really doing their job, but they're doing something and I've never had a problem with grip or traction on this. I kind of thought I might. So that's kind of something that was nice that I didn't really expect. I was able to hit these just fine. And I would also say that in some ways it absorbs vibration better than any of the other grips and you can really swing away with this. So if I just show you here that if I'm gripping it like this and I put my other hand up here like on a baseball grip, pushing it down as far as I can, man, this just feels great. This feels like I am gripping a baseball. It feels like I have a ton of surface area. I am really, really sold on the design of this grip. Now, one of the things that I've seen on some of the other reverse taper grips that I think some of those don't even exist anymore, they have a little like baseball butt flared end here and i think that's maybe so you can line up um, when you are choking up on this or wherever you'd like to line up if you use the end cap as a reference point just keep in mind you don't have that here so i always kind of do this i look down and i just put it in my hand you know where it's about comfortable and maybe it's just about an eighth of an inch uh, from that end and i kind of line up so you don't have as much reference down here as you would on some of the other golf grips that have really distinct end caps but that's also another little trade-off but it's a very very small one so um yes and low makes these they also make them a variety of colors so you can be pretty bold with them i did think about going to blue because there's some blue in my clubs but i just went with the standard black because i wasn't even sure if i was going to stick with them but i will tell you that this is the grip i will be playing all year because it just meets all my needs you know and for all of us we're gonna have different priorities on our golf group uh but 
for me, it was get the grip as comfortable as humanly possible so that then I can really go at it. I really feel like when I was using thin grips like this, uh, uh, super stroke one you know it's just it's a little out of control it's really hard to know if my hands are 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 timed upright and especially now that i'm going to the single plane swing you know that allows me to kind of just line up and uh, kind of freeze that position in and then just go at the ball and this grip i think allows me to go at that in a way that i've never been able to before i can really go at it with some some fervor you know when you go up to the ball and you're just like man i'm gonna i'm gonna try to smack the heck out of this thing and it just goes wild a grip like this allows you to really feel like you're still in control of it so i really really love it so let me just give you the dimensions on this to prove what we've got here so if i go down this and they advertise one inch that is almost smack dab on and then if i go down here to the bottom end uh this is 1.22 inches so not not exactly 1.5 but what i want to do is show you here again if we don't forget the fat end of this jumbo max 1.16 and the the skinny end you know 0.91 so it's even a little bit bigger and you would say well that didn't work for you well it's because it's reversed now so now i've got the skinny end of my hand so i really like this but if they did make a version that was maybe i don't know one thirty seconds of an inch uh smaller in diameter man i'd probably go for that one it probably would just fit me like a glove i will also say though if you need it to feel a little bigger you can go down and you're in the down and choke up and that's actually going to blow out the size of the grip in the feeling of your hand but for me if i stay right up here towards the end you know even kind of sneak it in there then i'm kind of getting my hand at the the smallest part and you can kind of tune it a little bit that way but that is the comparison of all these oversized grips hopefully you can find the grip that you like i will put links to all of these grips in the description below so that you can pick up one if you like them peter von panda out <laughs>